know, well, no, well, that line is where it was originally that goes. But, uh, no, I think I'm going to have it. Don't get the single digit. Okay, that's the yeah. 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 so you have to do that. Okay. Yeah. 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 So welcome. We're going to get started here. It's about five minutes after uh, 10 o'clock. And so we thought we'd give time for anybody that wanted to show up fashionably late. So uh, this is a uh, information session about the Free State Project. My name is Varen Swearingen, and I live here in Keene. I've, uh, uh, myself and uh, Jason Sorens here will be presenting, and there's bios on the flyers that we handed out. I've lived here for about 11, almost 11 years now and have held, held a variety of volunteer positions with the Free State Project, including uh, I spent about 10 years on the board. Uh, I was the uh, Porcupine Freedom Festival lead organizer, the uh, vice president, the president, the national media representative, a bunch of other things. Um, and uh, Edie, my lovely wife, is running uh, the slides today. We also have four children. Uh, two of whom were born in California before we moved to New Hampshire and two who were born here in Keene. Um, so I'll be uh, presenting maybe the second half or so before the Q&A and uh, Jason can uh, introduce maybe a little bit more about himself for the first half. Just a reminder, uh, there's some re refreshments and restrooms in the hallway. Uh, if something goes wrong in the building, I have to do my airline pilot thing and say the emergency exit is up the stairs and straight ahead after you get to the top. Um, we are videoing and Cheshire TV is here to video uh, the, the, the presentation on behalf of the Free State Project, but also there's a couple of other people videoing. We don't have any control over what they do with that, but our intent is to have this uh, for the benefit of the public, and uh, so Cheshire TV is uh, planning to air that, and then we'll probably have that on the Free State Project's YouTube site at some point. Um, so the, the first half an hour or so roughly will be Jason and myself, and then we'll have Q&A, and the idea is to have as much Q&A as we can to answer your questions. So without any further ado, Dr. Jason Sorens. Thanks, Marin. So uh, we do want to keep this short to allow uh, a good period of discussion, but um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about uh, how the Free State Project got started and what the ideas were behind it. So the Free State Project started in 2001. I was a graduate student. Uh, working on my dissertation, and I was a little bit frustrated with the progress of kind of um, libertarian ideas in politics. And this was shortly after the 2000 election. It seemed as if we were sort of, as a country, moving in the wrong direction. And so I thought, well, why don't we try to uh, leverage our ideas by uh, finding a place uh, that's already relatively sympathetic to libertarian ideas, and we can move there. And so I, I wrote an essay for an online journal called The Libertarian Enterprise in July 2001 and invited people who were interested in the idea to come and join me online uh, and we would sort of hash out the details. Uh, not everything that I wrote about in that original essay made it into the final idea of the Free State Project. It was really a collaborative effort. We launched uh, a website and a statement of intent in September 2001. You can take a look at the, the statement of intent. This is what people sign when they sign up for the Free State Project. Uh, I hereby state my solemn intent to move to the state of New Hampshire. Once there, I will exert the fullest practical effort toward the creation of a society in which the maximum role of government is the protection of individual rights to life, liberty, and property. So um, what does this statement of intent mean? What is this uh, philosophy where government's limited to protecting individuals' rights to life, liberty, and property? Well, you, you might notice that it sounds a little bit like the formulation from the Declaration of Independence, right? That all men are endowed with uh, rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Uh, the formulation life, liberty, and property comes from John Locke, his second treatise of government, which uh, was probably the most influential political text on the uh, American founders. And the basic idea is that we all have rights. Uh, to ourselves, our lives, our, <clears throat> our liberty, and the things that we own in the external world. And it's wrong for other people to take away those rights. Uh, and that includes government. And so um, at most we want government to be limited to protecting those rights and not taking them away. 
Uh, so you, you might think of this as uh, one libertarian political theorist, maybe the, the most significant uh, political theorist of the 19th century, uh, Herbert Spencer, uh, called it the law of equal freedom. And his formulation of this was that uh, everyone should have the maximum freedom consistent with the same freedom for everybody else. Right? So do whatever you want, so long as you're not taking away other people's life, liberty, property, their freedom. Right? So that's our philosophy, and you can call it whatever you want. Not everyone would agree with the term libertarian. Uh, for this philosophy, you might call it classical liberalism. But the basic idea is that we favor limited government, we favor uh, robust personal freedom, robust economic freedom. We tend to be in favor of uh, peace and foreign relations. We're not big fans of foreign wars. Uh, we tend to favor decentralization to the uh, most local possible level. Uh, those are the ideas that tend to be associated with this political philosophy. So it's really different from the dominant political philosophies in the United States, conservatism and progressivism, but it's still a, a very important political philosophy in the American tradition. Right? We're drawing our political philosophy right out of the Declaration of Independence and the text that influenced it. Moreover, uh, libertarians have been hugely influential in the academy. So probably the, the most important economist uh, of the 20th century, Milton Friedman, was a libertarian, um, as was the second most important uh, philosopher of the 20th century, Robert Nozick. Uh, so the libertarian ideas, although a small share of the electorate in the U.S., uh, play an outsized role in policy discussions and uh, in academic philosophy, political science, and economics. So my idea was, hey, we've got these great ideas. Um, they're they're well respected in the academy. They're well respected among people who do public policy research, but they're not known in the general population. So how do we fix this problem. Well, let's focus on a single state where there already is some kind of native sympathy for these ideas, and uh, let's, let's try to get these ideas a fair hearing in the political process. Um, so one uh, misconception sometimes is that the idea of the Free State Project is to take over. Uh, that doesn't make sense given that uh, the Free State Project is only aiming to get 20,000 participants uh, to move to New Hampshire. And that's a small share of the New Hampshire population. The idea isn't to outvote everybody else. The idea is to get these ideas a fair hearing. Get libertarian and classical liberal ideas into the public conversation. Voters can accept them or reject them. Uh, but the idea is that at least they'll get a fair hearing, we'll be on a level playing field with conservatives and progressives, and, uh, and we'll see what happens from there. So I want to give also a little bit of a, uh, uh, a personal take on, uh, on the Free State Project and, and uh, you know, what, it, what it means for me and what this philosophy means for me now that I've moved to New Hampshire. Um, so a little bit of, of history leading up to that. The Free State Project held a state vote in 2003 among 10, um, uh, 10 states, and New Hampshire won that vote. And so since then, we've been trying to recruit people to move to New Hampshire. Uh, I moved about two years ago. And uh, the reason we chose New Hampshire was that it did fit with uh, those ideals of personal and economic freedom more than any other state. If you were going to point to a single libertarian state in the country, it would definitely be New Hampshire. Um, so some reasons for that. Uh, first of all, New Hampshire's constitution is probably the most libertarian in the country. If you read New Hampshire's constitution, um, it affirms uh, the principle of decentralization. It says that New Hampshire is a sovereign and independent state that has delegated some powers to the federal government. So the idea is that the state is the sovereign entity. The federal government is a useful tool that states can use uh, to solve problems among themselves, but it, it really doesn't have a kind of independent value in itself, right? So New Hampshire is kind of the fundamental uh, place for, for political engagement. Um, second of all, the, the Constitution of New Hampshire is one of the few con state constitutions that does not mandate government ownership of schools. And that's a pretty significant thing for me. I, I agree with Milton Friedman. I'd like to move toward a system in which um, 
yes, we have tax funding for schools, but parents can choose which school to send their kids to, and the money follows the child, and government doesn't have to own and, and operate schools. Right? We don't have to have socialized education. And New Hampshire is one of the few states where the Constitution does not mandate that kind of system. So the legislature could move uh, towards something like a, uh, a private um, education system. Um, one of the projects I'm involved in, one of the research projects I'm involved in uh, with uh, my colleague William Ruger is a project called Freedom in the 50 States, where we try to uh, rank all of the 50 states on economic and personal freedom. That is, economic freedoms having to do with starting a business, um, you know, uh, hiring employees, things like that, regulations on that. Economic free, uh, personal freedom refers to more lifestyle freedoms. Right? How free are you to homeschool your children? How free are you um, to uh, purchase alcohol or tobacco or marijuana? Right? Um, so those, uh, those policies we aggregate into economic and personal freedom. And uh, we collected the data. We looked at the, the research and the literature to try to weight these variables to say, well, how important are these different uh, policies? And what the data spit out was that New Hampshire is one of the freest states in the country. And in addition, New Hampshire is the only state in the country that has lots of both economic and personal freedom. Usually these are negatively related, right? Uh, so the more conservative states may not have so much uh, personal freedom, especially in terms of you know, whom you want to marry or, or certain substances that you may want to possess, right? Um, but they might be good on economic freedom. And the progressive states are the opposite. Not so good on economic freedom, but often good on personal freedom. Well, New Hampshire is good on both, and it's unique in that sense. Finally, um, the governor of New Hampshire uh, back in 2003, Craig Benson, signed up as a friend of the Free State Proje Project, welcomed us to the state, lobbied for us to choose the state before the state vote, and I think that also made a difference. So clearly, uh, New Hampshire was... Um, you know, stood out from all the rest in terms of the welcome that we were getting from the people in New Hampshire. Uh, it was also the state, you know, you could sign up for the Free State Project if you lived in one of these 10 states we were considering. And we had more Free State Project signers from New Hampshire than any of the t other 10 states that we were considering. Today we have um, over 1,500 people who've moved to the state. Uh, we have close to 300 who were here before the state vote. And we have over 2,500 people who signed up as friends of the Free State Project in New Hampshire, which basically means you agree to the statement of intent, but you already live here. And so we have over 4,000 Free Staters in New Hampshire now. Uh, so kind of keep in perspective, you know, um, when you think, when you hear about, well, Free Stater did this, Free Stater did that, there are 4,000 Free Staters across the state, and they're all sorts of people, and, and Varen's going to talk a little more about that. Uh, I want to, to, uh, to wrap up my part uh, quickly here with just a little bit of a, a personal take on how I see um, my involvement in New Hampshire. Um, I'm really interested in, in the educational side of things, in promoting the ideas of liberty. And uh, so the projects I'm involved in um, focus on that. I've started a, a nonprofit called um, Ethics and Economics Education, and we uh, run programs in moral philosophy and economics for high school students and for uh, policymakers uh, in the state legislature. And that's been going really well. We had uh, fantastic success in, in the two high schools that, um, that we ran the programs in last year. Uh, the students really loved it, the teachers loved it. It's not ideological indoctrination, it's giving them access to classic works from, um, you know, from Western political and, and, and philosophical thought, and we discuss them. It's not lecturing, it's a sort of Socratic style discussion where we try to work through these problems, and they love it. Um, I also teach uh, part-time at Dartmouth, and I run a student program there called the Political Economy Project, where we do faculty student dinners, we hold debates, bring in external speakers, and things like that. Um, so that, th that's the kind of stuff I'm really involved in in my uh, spare time. I also um, volunteer a bit for the Upper Valley Land Trust, which is a private land conservancy in, in, in our area. I'm a big environmentalist. This is an area where libertarians might disagree. Some libertarians are more on the conservative side of the environment. Maybe I'm more on the liberal side of the environmental question. Um, and that just goes to show you some of the diversity that happens uh, among uh, the people in the Free State Project. 
All right, with that, uh, I'm going to turn it over to Vera, who's going to talk a little more about um, how the Free State Project and participants relate to each other. Oh yeah, oh yeah, uh, let's do one, uh, one video clip. Uh, let me introduce this video clip. It's um, uh, Matt Simon, who's a, a friend of mine, and he is the director now, the, um, the New England director of the Marijuana Policy Project. So he works on liberalizing marijuana laws. And uh, this clip comes from the movie Libertopia, which was uh, filmed uh, by some independent filmmakers uh, from Current TV a few years ago. And in this uh, particular clip, uh, Matt is interviewing a medical marijuana patient, Clayton, uh, in advance of a bill that was coming up in the state house to legalize medical marijuana. Um, and just so you know, we do have copies of the movie Libertopia. Uh, afterwards, if you're interested in picking one up, I'm selling them for $2. So, uh, so with that, uh, Edie, do you want to start the clip? Yeah. 